Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chantel and I'm a digital planner creator and I have been using GoodNotes for as long as I've been using my iPad and that has been for a long time. I've been creating planners and templates specifically for GoodNotes. GoodNotes is by far my favorite writing or note taking app that is currently available and I am pretty excited to see some new developments rolling out for GoodNotes 6. I'm going to show you all the new features in GoodNotes 6 but that is also coming with a new price point and a new pricing structure. Quite a significant change from what we're used to with the one-time purchase situation that GoodNotes used to be and now it has a free version. I mean, I had a free version before, like a limited free version. That's the same with the three notebooks. And then it also has an annual subscription version, and it also has a version that you can pay for all out. We're going to look at the new features for GoodNotes 6 and talk about the new price point and whether or not I think it's worth it. There are still some features that are going to be released that was in their ad campaign that isn't out yet. So that says to me that there's going to be new updates coming out to GoodNotes 6 hopefully frequently, and I wanted to do a little fun section at the end of this video if you're interested in sticking around and what my wish list items for GoodNote 6 are. And if you have anything that you'd like to add, let me know down below. It would be awesome if some of these extra features were included because there are still some features that I wish were included in GoodNotes. So anyways, the first thing that you'll notice is different is the icon. It's ever so slightly different, a little bit more round, on each of the lines and it has a little smiley face at the end of the pencil which i think is super cute you'll notice that i am going to appreciate a lot of these aesthetic preferences that may or may not matter to you but i feel like if you follow me in my channel they probably matter to you so here is the new interface we've got a whole new look here with a sidebar and then probably the most stark difference on this page is we have got more folder customization than we've had before. So the old version, if you remember, it was just these little sharp blue folders. And now you can change the color of your folders and you can also add a little icon on the front as well. So to change this, all you need to do is tap on your folder. There's a little drop down menu here and then you can select out of these colors. So say we wanna make this yellow and then we can tap on icon here and you have a select amount of icons you can use and i actually really love them i like the shape of the folders as well everything in the app is a little rounder than it was before and i like that i like that especially on the ipad with its own rounded corners everything looks a little softer and overall i really enjoy that so the next thing we have here is you'll notice there's a new sidebar. So you've got your documents, your favorites, your search, you've got your shared section, and then another brand new feature is the marketplace. So in the marketplace, you'll get a subscriber special. So I'm not sure how often, but you get free goodies to download. I hate using the term free when I'm talking about a paid app because obviously you're paying for them, but you get included stickers and folders, covers, fun things like that. And they're super easy to go ahead and download directly into your GoodNotes. So that's super fun. And besides that, we now have the option to shop by creators. So I'm not really sure what the requirements are to sell on GoodNotes, but it's not like a free marketplace. So you cannot just go ahead and sign up and start posting your stuff in here. You definitely have to apply through this little type form and go ahead and answer the questions if you want to get into GoodNotes. I'm not in there yet, so I can't answer questions as a seller just yet, but hopefully I do. And then I will let you know what that experience is like. If you happen to be a planner or a digital downloads kind of creator as well, who creates things for GoodNotes. I love the idea that you're going to be able to get for many creators. I love the idea that you're gonna be able to download things directly in the app and support creators that way. I also love that it's probably gonna take the pressure off of normal creators to teach people how to download and use 
things in GoodNotes because since it's integrated, it'll automatically populate. So I will let you know how that goes as I do a little bit more investigating. The next thing we have here is interactive exam prep. You have a few options for standard tests here. I have downloaded the SAT math practice course because there is a little interactive AI math feature that we'll talk about in a little bit. Another cool kind of aesthetic, but also just a customization thing that they've added to GoodNotes 6 is that there are new options for customization in notebooks. So if you go ahead and add a new notebook here, you've got a lot more options for covers. I really like this one and you can change the color of them as well, which is super fun. I kind of like this white one. But the coolest thing I think is that you can now customize the paper. So you've got a ton of options here for paper. Let's go ahead and do maybe like a Cornell style sheet. But now besides just having your standard yellow, white, and black, you can also customize the template. So if I click on this, you can change the color of your background. You can change the color of your foreground and then you can do an accent color as well and the cool thing about this is that you can use their grid but you get access to all the same color features they have everywhere else so you got a spectrum and you've got your sliders so if you have codes rgb codes or hex codes that you already know that you like you can go ahead and use them that way this is a super fun option, I think. And the nice thing too, is that once you're in your notebook, you can continue to customize your templates. So I gotta be honest, I love the customization options. Personally, me being the person that I am, I could totally see myself paying for the app just to do all these little customization things. I cannot help it. That is just the way that I am. Yeah, these are really cool. I could see people having a lot of fun with this. This would be really cool for branding and stuff as well. So if you're into the aesthetics, this is super, super fun. Now that we're in here, you'll also notice that the toolbar is a little bit different. So I was actually super confused when I first got in here as to how I turned the tools on and off. But now you'll notice that there's a pencil, a typewriter tool and a recording tool right here in the middle. And if you tap on one of the tools here, it'll open up its respective toolbar. So if you hit on the pen, it opens up your pen toolbar. If you hit on the typing little icon, it opens up your typing icon. And then obviously if you hit on record, it'll go ahead and start recording for you. So that is super cool. The actual toolbar here, when you hit on the pen is pretty much exactly the same, except the icons are a tiny bit smaller, a little bit rounder so they look slightly different but you're going to be able to tell what icon is what so we're probably not going to go through that today but what is new is that they have a new full page typing tool here so what i'm going to do is grab a new page so i can show you that is truly bizarre it shows you your current page your current template page is the cover of your whole notebook which is definitely probably going to be a little bit confusing for people who use custom ones that's interesting. Okay. But beyond that, here we are in typing mode. You can go ahead and tap on that. And now instead of having to place your text box places, you're able to enter a full typing box. So if I could see this being especially useful if you're in classes or in meetings and you just don't want to handwrite, you just want to type, you're able to do that in here. The other cool thing once you're here in the typing format is they've added some new features to use AI to improve your writing, finish your sentences and things like that. So far it's still in the experimental phase, but let me show you kind of what it does. So if I say this typing tool is cool, <laughs> I can go ahead and select that. And then there's a new icon. It kind of looks like one of those, the little star emoji. So if I click on that, you can ask it to fix your grammar and spelling. You can ask it to paraphrase what you're saying. You can ask it to change your tone to professional, friendly, or confident, make it longer or make it shorter. So I wonder if I were to make this longer. That is so cool. It's basically like having ChatGPT built right in. This is very cool. I enjoy it. I'm excited to see what the full version looks like. I could see this being very helpful if you're a student or 
even if you're using this for work and you just need a little bit of help in the writing department, I'm not sure how using AI impacts your schoolwork when you're in school. I mean, someone let me know I'm not in school anymore. I'm not sure how allowed it is, but if you're allowed to use it, it's very cool. The next thing that they have here, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch back into my preferred way of using my iPad, which is portrait, because I'm gonna go ahead and take you to my current week. I keep Phantom wanting to hit the top right corner where the toolbar on and off was. So another cool thing that they've added here are gestures, some new gestures that you can use with your pen tool that's gonna make using good notes and taking notes a lot quicker because you're not gonna have to switch between tools as often. One cool thing that you can do is scribble to erase. So usually when you write something, let's rewrite this. See, usually we would have to use the eraser to erase, right? But now let's rewrite the same thing. See, I keep wanting to do it. But now when you write something out and you, maybe you want to change it, you can go ahead and just stay on your pen tool and scribble to erase. And I love that function. So the other tool that they've added is circle to lasso. So all you need to do is circle around and then you can go ahead and tap on it and it turns your circle into your lasso tool and you'll be able to move this wherever you want. And I think where GoodNotes gets to be really cool is for students, their interactive math feature is another one of their AI features that is super cool. And you can essentially get GoodNotes to help you with these little practice questions that they have. And if you make a mistake, it'll go ahead and show you with an underline that you have made an error. So that is super cool. And that brings us to my favorite AI feature, and that is spell check, but spell check in your handwriting. So if I go ahead and purposely spell shopping wrong here, it'll underline that shopping is spelled wrong, just like regular spell check. And if I go ahead and click on that and pick the right word, it goes ahead and rewrites it in handwriting. I will say this is an imperfect feature. I hope to see this improving. If I use my handwriting with this, it often doesn't really match up. So it doesn't really, I mean, it looks like script, but it doesn't look like my handwriting specifically. So I think we'll get some improvements. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it's super cool. And if you print, which I think more people print than script write like this, I think that you will be just fine. Another cool thing that they've added is an equation feature. So if you, and I'll go ahead and rewrite this so you can see. So it recognizes your handwriting, just like it does if you wanna to convert to text. So I can go ahead and lasso this, hold it down. And then when I click on convert, I can either convert it to text or to math. So if I click on math, and it'll turn into an equation. You can't change the color of this or anything. It groups automatically together as one piece. So you can't go in with the text tool and change it and you can't change the color of it yet. But this is really cool if you use, I assume, a lot of equations in your schoolwork. And that is all of the new GoodNotes 6 features that we have so far. I know there's gonna be a few more features that are rolled out and it brings me to my little wish list for things that I hope GoodNotes 6 gets in the future. One thing I hope GoodNotes 6 gets is a lock function. So you can lock down photos or you can lock down templates or you can lock down stickers or writing anywhere in the document that you're using and it won't move when you lasso around other things. The other thing I would like to see is a group function. So you can group multiple things together. I would love to use this on a sticky note and be able to write on it and then group those together. And then when I'm working on specifically my planner, let's just say what I am doing, I'll be able to grab that and move it around. I wish that was an option as well. But if there's anything else that you feel like is missing from GoodNotes 6, let me know down below. If you're wondering if I think that GoodNotes 6 is worth it, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I wasn't a little bit like icked out when I saw that it was a subscription model, but I am heartened to know that it's an annual subscription model and not a monthly subscription model. And do I think GoodNotes is worth $10 a year to me? 
100%. Do I think any of the other note-taking apps even compare to GoodNotes? To me, no. Especially now that it has so many of my notes already in it, I just don't ever see myself fully switching to another note-taking app. So I'm sticking with GoodNotes and I would say it's worth it, especially if you don't have any note-taking app yet. I think starting with GoodNotes is definitely the way to go. But that being said, if you do have GoodNotes 5, do I think that you need GoodNotes 6 if you've already paid for it? No, I don't think that the discounts for people that have GoodNotes 5 is big enough to warrant changing immediately unless you're maybe a student and some of these AI features are really going to appeal to you. Otherwise, I think you're going to be fine with GoodNotes 5. I think they said that they're going to have support for GoodNotes 5 for a while. So I think until iOS 18, don't quote me on that. I think I saw that in a forum or something. So that's a good long time for you to kind of decide if you like GoodNotes 6 and probably to see some other changes come out as well. The other thing, should you go for the $9.99 a year or should you go for the $30 and not have to worry about a subscription personally? I did the $30 because I know I'll be using GoodNotes for as long as it's available. But then I was thinking as I was doing research for this video and what I would recommend to you guys, and I thought I would go and look and see when GoodNotes 5 was released. And it was released January 2019. So we've had GoodNotes 5 for four and a half years. So if that's any indication of how long we're gonna have GoodNotes 6 before we have GoodNotes 7, $30 is probably worth it, but you're probably not gonna see that much of a difference between if you go annual or if you go with the full model. The other thing I noticed, again, in forums and on their website was that there are gonna be features, features that aren't rolled out just yet, that are available with the subscription model that aren't gonna be available with the $30 version. And I think those features are more cloud features. I think those are features that are going to be able to incorporate your GoodNotes account and you're gonna be able to access it on Apple devices and non-Apple devices. So right now you already have perfect integration with Apple devices and that was even in GoodNotes 5. You are able to access your GoodNotes account and everything that you add to your GoodNotes account on your iPad, on your Mac, and on your iPhone completely, totally syncs up perfectly. But if you had an Android phone, you weren't able to do that. And that's because we didn't have GoodNotes for Android. But with the release of GoodNotes 6, we also have the release of GoodNotes Android and for Microsoft Surface as well for Windows. And I'm testing those. That'll be my video that'll come out after this. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. But I think what we're gonna get in the future is a way to sync them all up. And I think that that's what the subscription service is going towards. And a lot of that stuff is necessary in order to pay for the servers and things. So although I do understand getting grossed out by subscription model apps, trust me, I too have added a ton of subscription services that I don't use and that I'm looking back later and wondering what I spent all this money on. Do I think GoodNotes is like predatory by charging $30 or $10 a month or $10 a year actually? No, I think it's totally worth it. I spent $7 on a drink at Starbucks before, so I think GoodNotes is worth a lot more than that to me personally, but if you have GoodNotes 5, you can totally ride that out for a while longer, especially if you're mostly using this for your planner and regular note taking. So that is all my thoughts on GoodNotes 6. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. If you have things to add to the wish list, please do that as well. Maybe fingers crossed GoodNotes, someone on the GoodNotes team will see it and we'll get our little dream come true features. I mean, manifest, right? And I will catch you next time. Bye.